I, I got to kick off with one thing. I didn't see a stoppy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look, you know, <clears throat> I did tell you before that I wasn't any, well, I couldn't do them. Wasn't any good at them. So. <laughs> <laughs> you did. Yeah, you didn't promise. I like to practice, mate. That was a goddamn masterclass. It was a good weekend. Bloody awesome. Yeah, I could tell. I mean, everything just was perfect. I mean, you got and like not only the riding and the racing for you uh, and the team, um, but you know, you got complete races too. They weren't red flagged and oh, just like crazy. just everything. It was just it's you know like uh, you can you, sometimes you can be doing all the right stuff. Um, like we like we try to you know it's not like we did anything different this weekend. You always do this, do the same stuff. You always try just as hard, but um, yeah. Sometimes it's just going your like everything just going your way. You know, like a few things happened with over the weekend with the weather, and it all just fell my way. And yeah, exactly that. Just lucky, you know. Very fortunate that the races panned out the way that they did. And yeah, you, it's people say to me they're always like, oh, you know, good luck. Oh, but you don't need it. I'm like, actually, you need all, you still need all the luck, you know. Like even even when you're doing all the right stuff, you still need all all the luck. So um, yeah, it's yeah. like like all the ducks have got to line up, haven't they? I mean, a row. It's it's because a little bit of bad luck and a good day can turn into you know crap yeah. at the end of the well, day. That's right. like, like there's um there's only so much that you can control, you know, and there's a lot of things outside that that you have no control over, and yeah, yeah. You know, all those things that have got to be lining up for you to to make it all work. So. <laughs> yeah, well, mate, it was impressive. I mean, I, and I remember when we spoke last time after round two, you said, you know, okay, you're drifting, you're going towards QR and then Morgan Park, um, tracks that you're really familiar with and you felt like there was going to be, you know, more, what's the word, you know, bias more towards something that suited you and your riding style. And uh, it panned out that way. So it was pretty cool. Um a, a, the qualifying side of it, you you actually qualified pretty good too. And uh, like I just look, I got the qualifying sheet up here. Um, fast lap time of one minute seven one fifty five. That's a new record too, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, new qualifying that record by. I think it's by might be by about half a second. I don't know if you've got the sheet there. It should say what the old record was, but it's, it'd be close to half a second. It's a fair bit, fair chunk. What is it? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it doesn't say. Oh yeah, new qualifying. The previous was 107.565, so... Yeah, 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 it's, four yeah it's drifting out there. It's, it's mm -hmm. that's amazing. Yeah, pretty cool. Um, mm -hmm. In fact, there are a couple of people, both you and Max Stauffer, young Max Stauffer was under the lap record, the old lap record. Yeah, yeah, he had a really strong weekend. Um, he was flying. He, like, he, we already knew that, you know, leading into the weekend that he was going to be um yeah pretty strong because we did a few we did a couple of days testing like um just just prior it was a few weeks beforehand just prior to the the testing band cut off so um more or less all all the teams and riders were there and um for, you know for the for the top top bunch um yeah and uh and yeah he was there and he was he was reeling off some really quick times then so um yeah going into the weekend we sort of knew that he was going to be going to be pretty quick but it took him a little bit to sort of get going the first couple of sessions i think he was just a little bit steady but then once he got got in the groove yeah he was really fast so um yeah i was not surprised at all over the weekend to see him going that quick <laughs> yeah yeah wow yeah he did awesome the uh okay if you look at the, the qualifying uh we had you qualified first uh with the new lap record max Stelfa qualified second then we had glenn out on the on the bmw third and it was fourth and fifth before we even got to a Ducati. Were you surprised that the Ducatis, you know, qualified back fourth and beyond? Yeah, well, look, the, the way that qualifying session actually went, um, it, it was a little bit hindered because, uh, and it didn't show, I, I wouldn't say that it showed the full potential of everyone because um, I think the first, like that, that particular qualifying session was a 15-minute session. Yeah. About the first, roughly the first five minutes of it were dry, um, which is when I was able to do my time. Um, but typically how it works is um, <clears throat> we will go out in that first session, we'll have a, a, a slightly used tyre in the bike just to get, just to sort of get your eye in, um, just sort of try and put in a banker lap time to, 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 to cover your bases. Right. And then you'll pit, you'll put your brand new tyre in 
and then like bring your rear tire in the bike and then you'll go and try and do your fast time and and everybody runs the same strategy um <clears throat> but i the, i could see like we we knew that the weather was a bit funny there and it there was a small chance that it might have rained and that's exactly what happened um we had the first five minutes that were dry um i put my head down and just try to reel off as quick a time as i possibly could on that sort of slightly used tire um and and it and it worked out that when everybody pitted to try to put their new tire in, it just started sprinkling rain. Yeah, right. um, and it, it wet the track just enough to, yeah, take the edge off it. No one could have a proper crack. So, um, yeah, in terms of the qualifying, it, it, I mean, we just didn't really get to see everyone's full potential. Um, so, so I wasn't, yeah, and it wasn't sort of surprising in terms of seeing that the guys were a bit further back. It was just a matter of, it's just the, the way that it panned out. You know, they, they didn't really have a proper crack and they just, you know, it's just sort of the that's just what they ended up with. You know, like they they, they were trying to yeah. trying to stick to their plan and they weren't able to execute it because of the weather. So, um, but obviously for me that worked out actually quite well to have Max on the Max and Glenn on the front row, um, and just to try to sort of hold those guys up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is isn't this where that you know uh, strategy and luck comes together because. Yeah. You know, that, that one factor, the weather that you really can't control and uh, it just went against the other guys a little bit. So Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Um, okay, we go to race one. Race one, you, you kind of didn't have it all your own way. It wasn't as, like, race two was completely different. What happened with race one, um, you had to fight your way back to the, to, to the lead again. Yeah, what was the story there? Yeah, so, <clears throat> like, lining up for that first race, I just had a lot of nerves because um, yeah. it, it's funny, like, uh, based on all like based on the practice sessions we'd I'd already done like about a nine or ten lap run during one of the practice sessions and, and reeled off a, a bunch of really consistent fast times and nobody else had sort of really done that during the practice sessions. so I, I was very confident with my pace that we'd have you know really really strong race pace um but what that what happens is is that when you know when you when you've got it done on paper then, then there's an expectation that you have to do it during the race, you know. And um, there was a lot of expectation, obviously, being being a home round for me and uh, and being a home round for the team. The expectation is to win. So if there was any, if there was anything, else, if any other um, result occurred, well, it would just would have just been a massive disappointment. So I was very that that type of pressure that you that you put on, like you create this all in your head, you know. Um, but you have this pressure on you, in, and so what happens is you, you've um, you, you go. You, I started the race being extra cautious, rather than uh, at other at other times you have a mindset where you know if you have to do something, and and you might be you might be the the underdog, or you might be a bit on the back foot or something. But you find the the courage, I suppose, to 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 find that little bit extra, and you become hungry, and you become. I don't know, a little bit angry, you know, and you find that a bit extra. So it's just yeah. two two sides of uh, and two sides of pressure basically. But for me, leading into that race, I was I was definitely just on the cautious side. I didn't want to make any mistakes, and I wanted I knew that I had the pace to be able to win. So I just didn't want to uh, mess it up basically. Yeah. So the the start the start though, regardless of of that, the start was always going to be tricky because Max is um, flying off the starts. He's been getting some really good starts. Um, at the previous round so i knew he was going to be really quick and glenn allerton starts really well so those two guys were on the front row beside me so um yeah that's that's sort of how it panned out those two guys got to the first turn ahead of me um and what that meant then is is that that just put me in the firing line of troy herfos and uh and he's a really you know um we know how competitive and strong he is yeah. so as soon as he seen me you know, in front of him, he he was no. There was no way he was going to try and let me get away. He was going to try and make my race as hard as he possibly could. So, I had to um I had to battle with him for a couple of laps to try and get enough of a gap um, away from him so he couldn't keep attacking. Uh, and then by that point, you know, Max had already got up the road quite a bit. He was he was I I, I don't know exactly, but I think it was about a second or more up the road from where I was. Um, and I really had to use my sort of outright speed to try to start to catch my way back up and um yeah was able to catch up to glenn and, and sort of deal with glenn pretty quickly but then i really i really had to focus and concentrate to try and bridge that gap to max because he was he was setting some really good times he was being pretty consistent um so it was a little bit tricky to try catch back up to him but once i got close to him um i think we were getting close to sort of 
half race distance were around about eight laps. Um, and that's sort of a time where the good part of the tyre starts to go away. You're sort of relying a lot on, you know, your, your outright setup. Um, and I, I guess just how, I guess just, um, yeah, how good your bike's looking after the tyre. And once I got to Max, I could see he, he was just starting to lose that edge on his tyre. He's just losing that sort of bit of grip. And um, so once I was able to go past him, I could I could sort of just put a little bit of a gap onto him and, and start to build a little bit of a buffer there. Um, but um, but yeah, that that um, that first half of the race was a little bit intense, and uh, it, it certainly wasn't the same as the second race. Second race was a little bit easier in that regard. <laughs> Do you like if you you say you're a bit cautious and a bit nervous at, at the beginning, you know, and and mm. to be expected based on you know the performance you had leading up to that. How much, how, what shift do you get in your, in what you give attention to over the course of that race? Because, you know, and, and I'm just casting my memory back to my racing days, you know, motocross and flat track. Um, if I was nervous, the attention seems to be a little bit on what you don't want to do, you know, avoiding things. And then it shifts later in the race as you just get real comfortable and, you know, your emotions do relax. What happens to you in terms of where your attention shifts and, you know, how's that travel? Yeah, look, and that's exactly right. I'm much the same. Um, I mean, in the in the beginning of that that race, um, especially that, that, that at the start and that first sort of one or two laps, um, yeah, it's exactly that. I'm focused on trying not to make a mistake when mm. the, the best way to not make a mistake is focus on what you should be doing, you know, doing everything perfect, doing everything right um so so the so the the mindsets yeah it, it's it's the opposite of what you should be doing yeah, um, right. but but once you once you you know with with the way the race goes you know um and the way that particular race went i had i had other things that quickly got my attention and, and had my focus which was you know a battle with troy mm. um a gap getting away with max um you know glenn ahead of me as well so those things quickly took my attention and, and and made me focus on what I needed to do. I needed to get away from her right. so he couldn't keep attacking me. I needed to get past Glenn and I needed to bridge the gap to Max to be able to have a chance of winning the race. So once that took my focus, then it was all just back to normal. You know, you just ride yeah. how you normally should. Um, but uh, but yeah, those first couple of laps, yeah, you, it's exactly what you said. Yeah, you're not you're not thinking yeah. about what you should be doing. Think about all the things you shouldn't be doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't focus on what you don't want. And, you know. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> <laughs> it. It's interesting. It's like maybe you need someone in front of you to make that shift. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, and I, I I can say that I'm a very reactive person. If there's uh, yeah, if if you're out just riding around on your own and you don't have any pressure or stress or worry to do anything. Well, you just sort of do the bare minimum. But if there's somebody that getting up the road from you that's, you know, putting time into you, look, yeah. kicks you in the gear and you go, all right, well, we've got to get going, you know. So, yeah, um, yeah it, do, it does. It makes a difference as to what who, what and who and what's going on around you, you know. Yeah. You, like, if I, I watched the races, then I compared it to the Sydney races. Yeah. It, it seemed to me like on the first half of the corner, you were more in control of your pace on the entry to corners because it really sharpened the exits at Queensland Raceway. Um, that That's what I saw or it seemed to be, you know, as an observer. What was the big difference for you between Queensland Raceway and Sydney Motorsport Park? Yeah, that that's definitely um, a big part of it. I hope none of my competitors listen to this because I because I'll give give, a, give away the secrets of Queensland <laughs> Raceway. <laughs> you still got to you still got to execute it, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. You still got to be able to do it. But um, yeah, look, that that's the difference I think for me at Queensland Raceway versus like say yeah uh, Eastern Creek uh, the previous round or even say Phillip Island. Mm. Um, whilst I've done a lot of laps at all the tracks, I've certainly spent more time at QR and I've refined myself a little bit more at Queensland Raceway. Yeah. And there is definitely, um, yeah, a, a bit of a knack or a bit of technique in terms of um, getting the most out of that particular track. It's such a difficult circuit because it's only six turns. Um, you only got six chances to try and make up make up time. Yeah. And um, uh, you, it, what I've found is is that you know you can uh, you can try to ride the track in what you think is the fast way. And you it, you just lend yourself to trying harder and harder and harder, and you just end up getting slightly slower and slower and slower. Yeah. Um, but yeah, what you mentioned before about just sort of pacing yourself a little bit on the entries, trying to not rush that too much. 
um, and focusing more on your on your exits and and, yeah. and that's kind of in 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 uh, <clears throat> in one mindset that that makes complete sense because a lot of the track runs onto long straights you know and mm. and stuff from the superbike school you know it pays big de- dividends to get your drive perfect and, and really nailed um, if you're running Magnif- on yeah it's magnified straight. it's magnified yeah. at the other end of the straights. Easy speed, the the easiest place to make up speeds on the, in a straight line. So if you can get the the, the exit of the zone sorted, then you're uh, finding an extra speed in a straight for free. So um, yeah, that that and and look, that's you know, there's there's obviously certain ways. If you've spent a lot of time riding Eastern Creek, or you spent a lot of time riding Phillip Island, I'm sure that that you you know you'll refine that to the to the absolute limit. And there's and there's certain ways of getting around those turns, absolutely perfect as well. But um, yeah, I think uh, Queensland Raceway is definitely one that I, I've got pretty dialed. <laughs> I could tell. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> well, we got uh, race one. The results were Mike Jones first, Max second, Josh Waters third, Herfoss was fourth, and Crew came in fifth. Um, Crew got pretty good starts, but he didn't wasn't able to sustain it uh, over time. Do you yeah, do you have any comments about that? Yeah, look, I, I don't really know. I mean, it's funny, you know, in, in the you know, we were t- we're a two rider team. Um, yeah. People probably think that we work a lot together. Um, we kind of don't really. I mean, I spend a lot of time doing all my stuff, um, and crew, you know, spends all his time doing his stuff. And whilst maybe I'm, I'm not sure, I think our mechanics might share some of the information between each other. You know, about ideas of things that you know, say my mechanics tried something with me, yeah. um, they might pass that on to crew's mechanic and just say whether it worked or it didn't work. You know, I mean, or, or vice versa. Um, but in terms of us, you know, helping each other or trying to work together and on, on the track, not really. Um, and we don't really talk a lot about that stuff. So I don't know what, um, how, you know, how how he was feeling or what what the situation was for him. Yeah. Um, but I, the one thing that I do know is is just that he he got really hampered by the qualifying situation with the weather. Um, you know, that put him a fair way back on the grid. I think right. he was the, the third row of the grid. So once you once when the like uh, the way that the track is there, like um, the times were very, very close. And so once you're, you know, starting back that far, like, you know, back of that that way it, and the times are so close, if, if you don't just have way more outright speed than somebody else, it's pretty mm. hard to to make up time or, and, and progress forwards in a race, you know what I mean? Sort of if you're yeah. starting back there and, and the times are all pretty close, well, it's a good chance you're going to finish sort of back there, you know what I mean? So um yeah i think probably the biggest thing for him was just the qualifying and then you know pretty hard to sort of race from there really yeah he we qualified seventh so he yeah. was uh, like you say back on the third row and yeah. you're right like you you look at the times you know we're talking tenths between it's pretty tight. you know lap yeah. times but making tenths up you know if you're four tenths behind and you're only, you know and you're on similar pace that's hard to make up and that's yeah 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 that's it and and the thing is too if you're when you're like, say, on your limit for speed, well, it, it's very easy, especially so if you're trying to close down a gap, you know, and you're completely on your limit. Well, it only t- takes a small mistake, and next yeah. minute that gap blown back out again. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's pretty tough to race r- when you're when you're fully on the limit of of your, of your yeah for your lap time. You know, so it's, yeah. yeah, it's hard to. It's it's interesting. You look at when you look at the sheets. I. I I always think about this in terms of MotoGP. You know, you 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 see the you know who Al, you know Rins comes in last or something. He's riding the Honda, and everyone goes, "That's you know that's crap." And when you look at it, he's flying, <laughs> and it's the same with ASBK. You know, you go down to you know Ant West down an eighth. You know, his fastest lap one hundred seven point nine five one. I mean, that's quick. <laughs> people aren't even getting a mention back there, and yet it's no. flying. You know, yeah. it's. Yeah. beyond the normal riding capability so yeah it's it's a it's a pretty interesting thing the way that whole psychology works yeah um, look like our, our field it's, it's um the depth of the field is actually pretty good really um yeah i mean and it's pretty stacked like uh yeah, exactly that i think like really the top the top 10 more or less are sort of <laughs> kind of really within sort of you know half a second or eight tenths of a second or something there like it's pretty tight um and, you're right. You, know, you think six tenths. Yeah, like you think six tenths of a second. Like you can't even count that. You know, what I mean, cross the cross the line. <laughs> it's pretty tight. <laughs> ridiculous. 
Yeah. yeah, but anyway, good. It was a good result race. When I, 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 I think you know the guys I was talking to enjoyed watching it because you had to work a little bit, but um, it definitely you could see the shift in focus and attention from <laughs> the winner at the end of the day. <laughs> Uh, we got a race two. Race two was uh, pretty cool, and you you had things your way this one because um, I think you got you didn't get off the line as fast as um, Troy, but you ended up passing uh, Troy, and yeah, you definitely had to pass one person at least yeah. uh, within the first lap. But then you led, you know, for what was a sixteen lap race, you led for fifteen laps basically. Yeah, um, yeah, so, <clears throat> yeah. This one was I'd learnt from the from the first race, and obviously. Part of that is that ner- the whole nervous situation and all that pressure mm. and stuff all sorts of starts to go away because you've already done a race, you know, you sort of know where you're at and what's going on. Um, but what I'd learned from the first one is is that, you know, having given away that gap to Max early on, I had to spend a lot of, um, you know, uh, energy or time trying to close close up to Max. And then once I got to him, then obviously having to try to build a bit of a buffer from there, and that was from half race distance onwards. Yeah. So you know for me going in the second race was like okay well like if i can be uh closer to max earlier on and then get the sooner i can get past him the sooner i can be using that energy and speed to be built trying to build a bigger buffer earlier on you know what i mean rather than yeah. just using it to try and catch back up again so um yeah that was sort of the mindset for the for the start of that race he started really well um got to the lead i think yeah it might have only been a couple of laps and i was able to um get get past and uh yeah sort of use that extra speed to start to sort of try to pull a bit of a gap but it was just as well that i'd um you know uh sort of switched on a little bit earlier on and and got myself in that position because you know mac both max and and troy um they were they were both i'd say more on the ball for the second race too Mm. um so that they made it really hard for me to get away I, I didn't i didn't really escape very much at all um they kept the pressure on and it, it stayed pretty close really for a, a, a lot of the race yeah. um and um yeah i mean if i had if i had run the race similar to the first race well i would have been it would have been a whole different ball game i probably would have been in a battle for nearly the whole race i'd say um but yeah like just getting away a little bit sooner meant that i could just get enough of a gap on them to sort of um keep them at bay but, um, yeah, what was interesting about that race and, and even for the first race too, right at about, I think it was about lap 13 um, or 14, there's only sort of like two or three laps to go. That's when the gap really blew out. Like it stayed pretty tight for, for a long, long part of the race and then just those last few laps it really sort of w- went away. Um, and I don't I don't know, I mean, I, don't, I didn't really speak to the guy, the, you know, Troy or Max too much about it, um, whether it was... Uh, I'm assuming is more of a tire degradation thing. You know, they, they must have suffered a little bit more for for loss of traction. I reckon, um, probably also too, maybe a little bit to do with back markers as well. You know, we did have a little mm. bit of lap traffic, so that probably could have played into it. Um, but yeah, I feel like our bike, my bike, was was really strong for just that whole 16 laps. I could just keep doing, you know, really really fast times, really consistent times as well for the whole race, and didn't really have any drop off, you know at all for the whole thing so um that that was pretty cool that was good yeah really solid race that one it's pretty hard to it's pretty hard to lead a race from for, for nearly the whole nearly the whole thing and not make any you know not make any mistakes and be or yeah. if you do make mistakes so marginal and and you know i think if i look at my um my lap run you know what i mean it, 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 majority of the laps vary by you know only, only a couple of tenths like it's nice it's really tight well, there was a few of the guys, you know, they, they started to make errors on, you know, one of the turns. I can't remember which one, but, you know, running wide in, in one of the turns in particular. Um, but we, one thing I did notice is it's like a lap, you know, might have been a lap 11 through to 13 or something. It looked like Troy was going to catch you. Like, yeah, he, he seemed to be closing the gap a little bit. And then, as you say, suddenly it looked like, you know, you put the hammer down. It looked like you went faster. Yeah. Um, but. You, you, what you're saying is you weren't going faster. They basically may have lost some speed uh, with tire degradation. Yeah, so I think <clears throat> uh, my understanding of it was that um, Max was was ahead of Troy for a, a large portion of the race, and then yeah. once Troy once Troy made the the pass on Max, he he tried to put in a big effort to try and yeah. close this, this gap up on me. Um, I I could see it closing down. I didn't sort of really change my pace 
too much. I just sort of watched, kept an eye on the gap. I could see it just closing, closing slightly. Um, it did get to a certain point. I, I did put in another quicker lap time. I think I did a 7.6 somewhere around there, three quarters race distance. And yeah, that, that just gave me that little bit, bit of a buffer back over Troy again. But definitely, yeah, what those last few laps, like I, I didn't, in those last few laps, I didn't change my pace. Right. But for sure, the gap opened right up. And, and that was just because of uh, them just, you know, struggling to, to, to maintain the pace, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. How much do you rely on the, um, the pit board, you know, when it comes mm. to these types of races? Yeah, in a situation like that, it's massive, you know. Um, obviously, in a race where you're having a battle or even if you're um, trying to catch up to someone or following someone, you know I mean, on your battle with a few guys, you don't look at the look at the lap board too much because you're so focused on what's happening in front of you. But mm-hmm. when you're when you're the one at the front and you're setting the pace, um, that that board is the only bit of information you got. You know what I mean? It's um, right. when you're when you're when you're a kid growing up racing, the first thing you get told is don't look behind, always stay focused on what's going on in front of you. You know, right. um, look, there's no, no, no nothing nothing good happening behind you. It's all you got to stay focused on what's happening ahead. Of you. Um, but obviously, you know, we don't have any mirrors or anything, so you, you don't know what's going on behind you, don't know how close they are, you don't know who it is behind you. So, yeah, with pit boards, great. It gives you your laps to go. Um, we have a gap to the rider behind you, tells me on the board who that rider is. Um, and if there's a, a – it will tell me if there's a, a group of riders, you know, how many there is in the group, or if it's just that one rider, then it will give me a gap again from that rider back to the rider behind them and who that rider is. So that way, then at least I know. Sort of, I've got a bit of a good. I've got a pretty good idea of where everyone's at, um, you know, behind, and sort of what the gaps are. And it's pretty important to know not just what the gap is, but who it is, because I mean that can dictate, you know, how you need to ride your race as well. Because um, knowing that it, that it's Troy that was behind me, for sure, I don't want to come to a, a last lap battle with him because he's so strong in that scenario. You know, but when it was Max behind me, I know that um, maybe I've got a little bit more experience over him on the superbike, so I can sort of, I can probably relax a little bit more knowing that it was Max mm-hmm. versus when it was Troy. You know, so yeah, no, knowing who it is, is is pretty crucial, not just the gap as well, but yeah, it's it's super important having the the, the pit board and rely on it a lot. Yeah, what was different about this? And you know, if you cast your mind back to the Philip Island round, like. You know, you pushed pretty hard at the front and you didn't want, you know, Josh to get away at the beginning. And I remember you talking about it, the, you pushed hard at the front and, but then you lost, you know, grip and traction at the back end of the, the second half of the race. Yet here you pushed fairly hard, but you didn't seem to have that same result. What, what's the difference between here and what's happening at Phillip Island or what happened there? Yeah. So, I mean, the, just the characteristic of the track and, and the surface of the track as well, um, I mean, the, the the just the physical actual layout of this track, I think it probably suits the Yamaha better and maybe suits my riding. You know, that whole combination works well around this particular track. Um, but from a uh, from the surface point of view, um, it's it's never been a track that um, degradates a tire uh, like a lot. And um, especially for me on the R1, it's always been um, we've been able to have pretty good tire life there. So I think that's yeah I think it's probably put it mostly down to um yeah the 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 actual track surface is, itself is uh seems to be I guess less abrasive um and yeah the nature the just the nature of this track you're not you're not sort of spending a, a lot of time on the the edge of the tire you know Philip Island you spend a long time on the side of the tire and so the riding for me at Philip Island where I want to if I'm on the edge of the tire for a long time and I want to have a lot of edge grip. Once that grip goes away, I find it really difficult to ride. Whereas here at Queensland, you don't um, spend so much time on the side of the tire. Um, you need a lot more, say, just drive grip, pure drive grip. And um, and you, you know, in the middle of a turn, you might touch the edge of the tire briefly, and then you sort of pick the bike up and start driving it out of there. And in that particular sort of style of riding where you're sort of not right on the edge for a long time where you sort of can pick it up even if the bike's spinning and sliding and moving around i'm very comfortable like that and um I, yeah again i just feel like our bike works really good in that sort of area so it makes it yeah i think that's probably the big big difference and that's why i sort of didn't really notice so much of a drop off there than than what we do at phillip island yeah right no that makes sense um you know, when you say, because there's a lot of braking and then just short turns, basically, at QR. 
Whereas yeah. Phillip Island, those long turn 12 and, you know, turn two and things like that, just sitting there smashing the throttle. <laughs> <laughs> just punishing, just creating a lot of heat in the side of the edge of the tyre. Yeah, but it's so much fun, isn't it? <laughs> it is a lot of fun, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, results for race two. Mike Jones first, Troy came second, Max Stafford came third, uh, Josh fourth, and Arthur Sissis came fifth. Uh, crew came sixth, and then uh, Glenn Allerton, who was doing pretty good actually for a while, like, uh, back in seventh. Um, if we go to the overall championship results, we've got Josh leading the way on the Ducati, Crew in second, uh, yourself in third, and there's only um, two and a half points between you and Crew, but uh, a few points back from Josh, Max on fourth, and Brock Pearson on fifth. Troy's back in sixth. Uh, how do you feel about your position in that overall, you know, championship now? Because you were, you were talking, I think you were fairly comfortable with it, uh, given that the first two rounds were at Phillip Island and then uh, Eastern Creek. But now we've yeah. gone to Queensland <laughs> Raceway. It's changed a little bit. Yeah, that's it. I think, um, you know, for me, I sort of need to wait until we finish the, the next round at Morgan Park. Right. Um, just to get a really good evaluation of where we're at because I feel like we do Phillip Island and Sydney, you know, they, they better suit um, Josh and crew. Um, but then and obviously Queensland Raceway and, uh, and Morgan Park, uh, certainly circuits that favour me a little bit more. So I guess we can sort of see where we where it balances out there at the end of those two rounds. But, um, yeah, right at the moment, having that perfect weekend, um, yeah, at Queensland Raceway, you know, with scoring that full 51 points, that, that's, mm. you know, um, what I needed to be able to do yeah. um, to sort of try and start closing in that gap to Waters because I think he was out to, <clears throat> he was out a fair way. It was like 40, 40 or 30 something points, you know, so it was a long, long way out. Um, it's uh, it's come back down now to him. I think we might just be over 30 points away from him um, <clears throat> and obviously close that gap right up on, on uh on crew so i'm only a few points behind him so um yeah i mean uh after the after the next round we'll see where we're at um based on based on just you know my theory of how it should go you know ideally i'll i'll be able to jump ahead of crew by a few points but we'll still be you know still going to be a few points behind quite a few points behind josh so um yeah, we'll just have to we'll just have to wait and see. Yeah, how this next round goes and, and where we're at. But for sure, it was really crucial to get the results that we did on the weekend to have any hope yeah. of trying to make some comeback in the championship. So, um, yeah, got the ball rolling there, and we need to keep that momentum going into the next one and essentially have the same result there to, um, yeah, again look at look at really bringing any any points back towards Josh. So. We'll see. We'll see what happens at the next one and we'll see where we end up. <laughs> we'll have another conversation. Then I'll, I'll either be happy or I'll be sad. <laughs> I want to see a stoppy. <laughs> the stoppy. All right, I'll, I'll start practising. We yeah, we we <laughs> I'm just going to plan it out there and everyone's going to be looking for it. <laughs> Are you... I'll, um, I'll start, you know... start practising. I'll, I'll get one for you. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, yeah, you picked up, uh, just looking at the scoring, you picked up 15 points on Josh uh, and you know, close to 20 points on Crew uh, this weekend. That was, uh, you know, that was pretty important. So, mm. you know, it might take a couple of rounds if Josh actually, you know, keeps riding the way he did at Morgan Park. Yeah. But, um, yeah. yeah, cool. Okay, so it's pointed in the right direction. Um, who impressed you the most over the weekend? Other than... Yeah, I, well... Yeah, the the obvious one for me is Max, um, oh. Max Stoffel, uh, because he, you know, he's shown promise. You know, he's been, I think he's been riding Superbike now. I think, I think this is his third year. I'm pretty sure this is his third year. Um, and uh, you know, at times here and there, he's you know shown a few little glimpses of um, his potential. Yeah. Um, but this weekend, I feel like he made a pretty big step. You know, he 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 showed that he was quite quick during the testing. Um, the few weeks beforehand, but uh, it's one thing to be quick at testing and it's another thing to still be quick at the race at weekend as well. Um, and he was able to do that. Uh, you know, he was able to lead both races. He made really good starts to able to lead both races, um, particularly that first race. He um, led for roughly, you know, half that, half that race. So, um, 
yeah, pretty impressive um, to be able to do that. And, um, yeah, I think for him it would have been a really good learning curve because he, you know, was around, he would have seen a lot, he would have learned a lot, I'm sure, from myself and from Perfos being in, being in and around us. Um, and, you know, that, like, I can only talk from my own experience that, you know, as a, as a young fella and, a, and somebody that's trying to learn, like that's the best thing you can have is just learning from guys who have been in the championship for a, a while and already got that experience. Like if you can just soak all that up as, as much as you possibly can. So I'm sure that he would have mm. learned a lot, you know, on the weekend. Um, and his dad was a racer probably too. The other thing, what's that? Sorry. I think his dad was a racer. Yeah. 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 He was uh, an exceptional racer. Yeah. <laughs> ja- Jamie, Jamie was, um, yeah, Jamie was an exceptional racer and, and uh, yeah, I think a multi-time Australian superbike champion. Right. Um, the other thing I think I've got to say about Max was, is that um, uh, possibly from a mindset point of view as well, like he came to the weekend uh, quite determined and maybe expecting um, uh, maybe even a bit better. Like I thought the result that he had was great. He, I think he was expecting a little bit better result. Um, wow. But I asked him, you know, oh, were you happy or unhappy with the weekend? And he was sort of a bit of a mix of both, you know. But um, that that's a good thing because, I mean, if, if, you're, if you're happy with coming second, well, that's no good. You're never going to be a champion if that's your that's mindset, great. you know. So for him to be sort of hungry that well, – even though that was an exceptional weekend for him, even though he's he's still not quite satisfied, you know, so he still yeah. wants the next little bit. So I think that he's, you know, and he's shown it already in the few in the few years that he's been riding that um, or riding superbike that uh, he just keeps chipping away at it, and he's got the determination there to um, put the effort in. And I think that yeah, it won't be too much longer, and he's going to get a race win. So I just need to keep trying my best to. <laughs> I'll hold him behind for as long as I can, but uh, yeah, no, he's going good. I think yeah, he made a big step that, that this weekend, and um, it, now it's going to be interesting to see how he can perform at another venue and see how he goes at another circuit. Yeah, well, you would expect that because you know that mindset around expecting to win, given that he performed well in the testing and you know qualified well, and you go okay, yeah. you know realistically he's got a chance. Yeah, you know, 100%. And again, a little bit of luck and, yeah. you know, who knows? Yeah. yeah, for sure. So, yeah, he's not that far away. No, uh, he's not. Yeah, you're going to keep <laughs> on your toes, that's for sure. He's going to give you there. <laughs> yeah. A question for you uh, that came up. I was, you know, talking to someone about, uh, you know, us talking together and doing these insights. Um, the question is, how do you prepare between races? You know, what do you do in there? Because... You've got these races are about a month apart, and it seems like it's not a lot of track time. Yeah. So how do you prepare in that gap? Yeah. So, I mean, there's there's one element of it is the physical training. So I do a fair mm-hmm. bit on the bicycle. That's my sort of best form of training is on the pushy, mm-hmm. um, both on the road and the mountain bike. I like riding riding both those bikes. I'll do some, um, yeah, like sort of club level racing as well on the on the bicycle, just to sort of keep your keep your fitness up. Yeah. Um, but I try to I try to do as many sort of ride days and um, mini moto sort of events as well to keep my fitness up on the on the bike um, and just sort of keep your eye in you know um, so yeah ride days and and, and mini moto events uh, are are a key and then just recently actually I've been doing a little bit of flat track stuff um, as well just to just to sort of mix it up um, but yeah I mean there's there's definitely a lot of downtime in our in our in our season and in, in our racing um yeah. and uh i guess you know you, you sort of think oh there's only so much you can there's only so much you can do but um but yeah i try to ride as much as i can um i'm nearly on the pushy almost every day um and then on top of that you know it, it's things like um just trying to get your nutrition and hydration and sleep trying to keep all that stuff in check as well um because um there's a lot to be gained from getting all that stuff sort of right as well. So mm. um, when you when you when you're not working a normal job like a nine to five job or whatever, um, you've got a lot of time obviously to try to get that stuff you know under control. So yeah. Um, yeah, for me that's just put a lot of attention into all that kind of stuff as well. So right, and um, you watch your diet too. I mean, you know, I remember when we caught up in Taiwan, it was you was you never you didn't lapse one bit on it the whole time. Yeah. So pretty yeah. disciplined with the food. Yeah, yeah, look, and that's the thing, like, I mean, when you, I, I feel like, um, 
wet, what, you know, with your with my training and 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 you know, you're sort of pushing your body to to the limit, and you're uh, it's at a high level. So it's like it's like like your it's like your motorbike or or you you know. Um, if you've got a, if you've got a, a high performance vehicle, you know what I mean. You've got to fuel it right. You know, if you're sticking crappy fuel in it, well, it yeah. doesn't run run as good. So it's the same for the body. You know, try to um try to do my best with you know taking care of that kind of stuff as well. So, um, yeah, I mean, it do, it's weird. It doesn't sound like you do a whole lot, but to me, in my mind and what I do from day to day, it seems like a lot. And for me, also, it's it's a it's a mental thing. It's it's the only thing that I do is focus on going racing because yeah. my goal is is to win. Um, so I do everything in my life to try to achieve that you know successful result. That's what well, I mean. Anyway, you got to be focused if you're going to win. I yeah, mean, exactly. That's that. the game, isn't it? Yeah, hundred uh, so percent. that's that that's that's where I'm at. That's what I do between <laughs> between the rounds. <laughs> Just try and give last, myself the best chance. <laughs> yeah, I, I got one last question. What what prompted it for me was I. I I cast, it, cast my mind back to, you know, back in the day when I was doing Enduros and all that, and there was a product that came out, right? It was called LucasAid, I think, LucasAid. And it was a, I mean, you get it in a litre bottle and it was this gold, um, you know, drink that you would have with minerals and whatever was in it, you know, some sort of hydration thing. And I remember a bunch of us went and bought this before we did this uh, enduro and we drank the whole liter <laughs> all of us got sick right thinking you know we, we're gonna you know that was our form of uh, uh drug you know drugging up before the, <laughs> the event yeah yeah yeah, yeah. What do you, you give an extra boost <laughs> yeah yeah well we thought it would be one thing but it turned out to be another thing but um it got me thinking about <laughs> what you do you know the day before or on the day of the event is there anything specific you do to prepare that close to the race you know even in the morning before yeah yeah. Okay. Um. I mean, it to me now it just is a normal sort of thing. But um. But yeah. I mean, look in terms of the whole hydration and nutrition stuff. Like, I I supplement with um products to you know help minimize what you're going to lose during the weekend. So right. um. Yeah. Big thing is you know um is simply just yeah your sweat loss. How much you sweat during the weekend. Um. And you know whilst you think sessions sort of doing. 20 or 30 minute sessions or 20, 20 minute races, you know. Um, but it, the thing is, is that you're going over the course of three days. So yeah. um, if you do it, you know, you do, you do your sort of hour, hour and a half worth of riding on, on Friday, um, you know, you pay tax on that the next day and then you ride again and you pay tax on that on, on Sunday. So you, you need to try to stay as close to optimal for um you know in your optimal uh, performance for sunday because that's the key you know what i mean like that's that's the that's the money day so um yeah so big thing is hydration um not only keeping your fluids up but um staying uh hydrated with electrolytes um so like i have a sponsor coda nutrition they help me with with taking care of all that kind of stuff yeah um and they have a, 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 an electrolyte that's um a high level for the for the sodium because you, when you sweat you lose so much salt so um yeah it's pretty critical like you can get stuff like you know like the gatorade or whatever you like even your lucasade or whatever you have from the shop but it doesn't have the same level of of electrolyte as 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 a as a specific sort of electrolyte product like that right. so that's pretty critical stay on top of your hydration um and then energy as well like so i'm a i'm a very slim person um as you as you know, very skinny, but um, you know, I'm like yeah. six foot tall and I'm sixty one kilos, you know, sixty two kilos, something. So very very Amazing. slim. Um, so I don't have I don't have I don't have a lot of like energy on my body to to just burn through, you know. So I've got to stay on top of my um, yeah, food and throughout the day. So I'm always snacking, always uh, you know, <clears throat> making sure that I get my meals, make sure I get a, a good breakfast in, um, and having your lunch, having your dinner. Um, but also snacking and, and even um, supplementing with um, you know energy gels and, and and bars and stuff like that during during the day before and after sessions. So um, yeah, to, to say anything specific, I'd say you know that sort of fifteen minutes before a session or before a race, I'll I'll take an energy gel um, just to give you that little bit extra boost of um, you know glucose and and that's sort of for your brain as well. Stay constant to keep the concentration. Um, but otherwise I've just worked out, you know, I've, I've spent a lot of time trying to work out what, uh, foods 
suit me and my body and what I feel best with um, and what seems to sit well in my stomach and what I can sort of tolerate and, you know, just, just what I can be happy with. Um, so, so, yeah, so, I mean, yeah, I've, everybody's a little bit different in that regard. Some people can tolerate more stuff or different types of food. Um, but, yeah, I found sort of what works for me and just try to stick to that. Once Now that I know what it is, I kind of just sort of stick to the same things, you know, don't change a lot. Yeah. So, yeah, typically breakfast is honestly just like peanut butter and jam on toast. Um, I'll run with that, make sure I have some sort of drinks and stuff, uh, fluid with it, you know. Um, that'll get me started in the morning. Lunches are either like a like a salad sandwich or, um, you know, rice and veggies and something like that. Um, and then dinner, I, I make sure I have like some sort of carb dinner, you know, like I'll go pasta or make sure there's a lot of rice and, you know, maybe something like salmon in there as well, you know, but veggies as well. So, um, yeah, fruit, fruits and veggies are pretty critical through the weekend. Yeah. Um, I think the big... Yeah. Like the, I think what's important here is, you know, the message that, that particularly young people who want to, you know, enter racing and that is mm. you're doing the hard work over the course of the month. It's not like, you know, you can bludge leading up to it and then suddenly you're going to have all this energy because you stick something in your body. Um, no, no, yeah. You're still, those who are going to win the game are going to, they're the ones who are going to are able to recover more quickly and sustain the energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It means you've got to do the work leading up to it, which I think that's the big part of what I see with you. Yeah. You're doing that hard work, um, and this is just supplementing it a little bit. But, yeah. Uh, it's no shortcut. Yeah. yeah, no, no. Like you can't – like if you, if you if your diet is a lot of takeaway and you're eating, you know, a lot, a lot of pizza and a lot of Maccas or, you know, that type of takeaway stuff that's that's – not really very nutritional and and um yeah it doesn't like sort of really fuel your body very well you can't sort of just be doing that and then expecting on the race weekend oh, i'll i'll take a you know whatever people you know people are into like monster or red bull something i'm gonna have a drink like that or you know an energy gel or whatever it is and expect that that's just gonna you know pep you up and 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 and, and allow you to perform um it might do that sort of psychologically you might think that that is what it's doing but yeah, physically for the body, no way. Yeah, no, you definitely got to be trying to eat as sort of clean as you can, you know, regularly and often. It's all about consistency. So yeah, the more that you can be doing that, the the, the better you're going to be feeling and, and looking after your body. So um, yeah, and hundred percent. It's just like this is an everyday sort of thing. It's not like you just yeah, you can't just sort of get to the weekend, the race weekend, and then hope that <laughs> it's going to be all right. <laughs> I always, you know, like I've I've always been an advocate of exactly those same things. And then I I I, I remember the guy in the Olympics who I think he rode, I think it was a cyclist, and then he was telling everyone. Or the, the reporters are talking about all he eats is Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> like, <Yeah>. what? <laughs> so yeah. Maybe there's an exception to the rule, but well, yeah, there, there's got to be. Yeah, no, no, it doesn't look. And this is the thing: some people, like I said, some people's stomach and some people's genetics, whatever, they can get away with it. Me, no way, man. I, 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 I can eat, you know, some crappy foods or whatever a little bit here and there, but. If I start trying to live on that stuff, I just go downhill real quick and it's no good. <laughs> it's no good. I start feeling terrible. I can't perform. I just have no energy. Everything's really bad. So, yeah, I, I uh, as much as you want to eat that stuff, like it tastes good, sure, but, yeah, no, it's it's no good. <laughs> <Tell us that. laughs> well, listen, mate, congratulations on the weekend. It's brilliant performance. Like I said, uh, a dead set masterclass, you know, on, on riding and, uh, it was awesome to see. So uh, good luck coming up at Morgan Park. Uh, we get that a month away. So uh, my fingers are crossed. I'll be an avid watcher and uh, I'm expecting to see a stoppy. <laughs> I'm going to be practicing. I'm practicing. The next time I go to the track, I'm, I'm going to be doing stoppies. I'm going to be learning. <laughs> As long as there's no, so long as there's no photos or video videos of me going over the handlebars, we'll be right. <laughs> hey, it only has to be that high. Yeah. <laughs> but mate, I can thank do, you for that. I, thank you. For, go on, mate. Sorry. I was going to say I can do them on my pushy, but uh, yeah, translating that to the motorbike's a little bit of a different story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it can all go wrong, can't it? <laughs> good on you, mate. Thanks for uh, giving us your time again, and uh, good luck with Morgan Park. Yeah, no, nah, cheers, mate. Thanks for that. I hope, um, yeah, again, I hope everyone enjoys listening to this and, uh, yeah, look forward to Morgan Park and we'll see you again after that one.